Okay, well, I'd like to welcome everyone to another Sunday service of Christ Reformed Church. I'm Pastor Ferguson, and it's great to be gathered together in the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. We serve an awesome God, a, a redeeming God, a loving, kind, a merciful God. And uh, today I'm going to talk to you uh, about Leviticus chapter 25 and the year of Jubilee explain to you what the year of Jubilee was and uh, a lot of misconceptions about the Jubilee and the seventh year, uh, the Sabbath, the Sabbath rest. Um, I'm going to lay it out for you so that you can better understand the Word of God and the significance of the Jubilee. I'm going to turn this fan down just a bit in case it's noisy. Okay, I hope that's a little better. Uh, before I get started, let's go to God, to the throne of grace, and uh, ask for His mercy. Amen. Ask for His grace. Uh, will you pray with me? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come unto you in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you and praise you for all that you are, all that you've done, all that you continue to do in our hearts and our lives. Forgive us, Lord, of our sins. Cleanse us of all iniquity. Create in us clean hearts and new right minds within us. And God, we come before you asking for your special mercy and grace and favor, uh, Lord, upon us, upon all of your children, Lord. Uh, teach us your word, your truths. Grant us the grace to be obedient. Uh, to follow after your word, to forsake our own selves, our own selfish, sinful uh, desires and agendas. Uh, God, grant us the grace to repent and uh, to, fo to truly follow you, to, to deny ourselves and to take up our crosses and follow you. Lord, we pray for all of your little children, for Tina, Irene, and Mark. Uh, Lord, we pray your hand of special uh, blessing and protection upon them. Please let nothing harmful or abusive uh, happen to these these children. Uh, Lord, we pray you would help them get back to the orphanage just as soon as possible. Uh, God Almighty, we'd be careful to give you all the glory, honor, and praise. Please protect their grandmother as well. And Sister Doreen, as she's been helping them and assisting them. Uh, God, we pray you would deal with their dad, who's been uh, abusive and uh, you will kill their mother. Father, we pray you would bind his hand and feet. Uh, Lord, you would deal with him appropriately, accordingly, as only you know how. Uh, we just uh, pray for the authorities, the police, and the government system. Uh, Lord, you bless them and uh, help them, grant them grace to follow after righteousness. Do that which is right, not be bought out by bribes. Uh, Father, we'll be careful to give you all the glory, honor, and praise. In Christ's name, amen. Okay, so we're going into Leviticus and chapter 25, very exciting chapter. Um, you know, I encourage people to read systematically through the Bible, and that simply means to start in the beginning and, and read forward, just as you would a book. Um, now, you can create your own little reading plan. Uh, for me, I'll read you know, one chapter out of one book in the Old Testament. Right now I'm in Leviticus, obviously. And then one chapter out of maybe Psalms or Proverbs. And then one chapter out of the New Testament. Uh, today I read 2 Peter chapter 3. And, uh, you know, you can create your own plan, but as long as you're moving forward systematically, and you understand the Bible. You know, that's how it's supposed to be read. Okay? Not just jumping around all the time, reading one verse, uh, one or two verses. That's not going to cut it. You need to read more than that. Okay? You need to, at minimum, you need to be reading at least one chapter a day. And if you have children, you should be reading to them as well and encouraging them to read the Bible. It's a good way to learn to learn reading skills, to obtain reading skills, is by reading the Bible uh, for children. 
Okay. So let me begin here. Uh, this is a pretty lengthy chapter. It's 55 verses. I uh, probably won't make it through the whole chapter. We'll see how far we get. Okay. So verse 1. Now this is the Lord speaking unto Moses. Uh, they're still, he's in Mount Sinai. That's the setting. He's on the mount. Uh, he's just received the Ten Commandments. Now he's receiving various uh, laws about the priesthood, uh, about sacrifices, the burnt offering, the sin offering, the trespass offering, all these different offerings. He's receiving instruction. So now he's about to receive instruction concerning uh, the Sabbath, the year of the Sabbath, the seven years, and the Jubilee, which is the 50th year. So let me begin in verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses in Mount Sinai, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, When ye come into the land which I give you, then shall the land keep a Sabbath unto the Lord. So what is the land he's, re he's referring to? Obviously, it's the land of Canaan, the promised land. Now, they're not going to get to that land for another 40 years. And the adults that he's speaking to, Moses himself is not going to be able to enter in uh, because of his problems with his temper and his disobedience to the Lord uh, and striking the stone in front of all the people instead of speaking to it, okay? Um, but the children are going to enter in, the children of the adults, 40 years later, okay? That's what's going to happen. And that's where this law of the sabbatical year, the jubilee in the seven years, is going to take place, okay? It's not, a, it's not an effect for the, in the wilderness, this doesn't apply. This is only for when the children enter in to the land of Canaan 40 years later. Okay? So it says here in verse 3, Six years thou shalt sow thy seed, and six years thou shalt prune thy vineyard, and gather in the fruit thereof six years. So the instruction goes back to Genesis where God gives a command the six, uh, you know, six days that God created the world and in the seventh uh, he ceased from his work, his creative work. And uh, in Exodus uh, in Leviticus we read that there is to be no work done on the seventh day. The Sabbath, a day of rest. Uh, it's important to note that this day of rest uh, was fulfilled by Christ. This day of rest was pointing to Christ, uh, as shown in Hebrews chapter 4, that He is our day of rest. Uh, he, he is our Sabbath. Okay, but He had not come yet, so they were still waiting uh, for their spiritual rest. They were still waiting for Christ. And so they were under the Sabbath. They were under that law. Alright? That jurisdiction of laying, of keeping that day holy. Okay? The Sabbath day. But in the seventh year, so they were to work just six days, rest on the seventh. Six years they were to labor, to harvest the field, and to labor and enjoy the fruit and the produce of it, the corn and the, the wheat and whatever else they were growing. But in the seventh year shall be a Sabbath of rest unto the land, a Sabbath for the Lord. Thou shalt neither sow thy field nor prune thy vineyard. So no wine was to be pruned, pressed, uh, no harvesting. Uh, it, it was a, a year of rest. 
okay, for the people of God and for the land. Because God owns both the people and the land. Uh, he wanted his people, his children, to understand this. He owns everything. Okay? He created everything. He is the owner of everything. And we are to bow down uh, to his jurisdiction over his creation. We are to honor him. Okay? Now, in the New Testament, we do have what is the Lord's Day. That faith should be set aside. Although there are no um, particulars about what you can and cannot do you know, on the Lord's Day, that you should have a day, uh, if you can, Sunday is the best day because that was the day the Lord rose from the, from the grave. That is the Lord's Day. Um, some people have to work or you know, are under that uh, uh, some type of contract. But they can still set aside one day to focus on their relationship with the Lord, uh, to focus on the Word of God. Okay? It's so easy to get caught up in the vicissitudes of life and the necessities of life, of work, you know, that you don't set aside time to learn, to, to get a, a good meal out of the Word of God. And that's what the Lord's Day is geared for is to be set aside to dig deep into the Word of God. Spend more time in prayer uh, and and religious you know activities okay, to strengthen your relationship with the Lord. Alright? Verse 5 That which groweth of its own of its own accord of thy harvest Thou shalt not reap. Well, whatever grows of its own wasn't planted. They were not even to cut that down. You know, wild plants and stuff. They were to leave that alone. Because it too belonged to the Lord. Neither gather, gather the grapes of thy vine undressed. It is a year of rest unto the land. Remember, in Genesis chapter uh, two, it says that uh, the land was cursed because of sin. Cursed be the ground because of Adam's sin. All right, and so God is here giving the land a rest, even though the land was under a curse. He's still giving it a rest. Although we come into the world under the curse of sin, He gives us rest in Christ. Amen. We get that year of rest, that seventh year, that seventh day. That is our day of rest, but it is only found in Christ. Okay? There can be no other rest except it be in Christ. Come unto me, all ye weary and heavy laden. I will give you what? I will give you rest, Matthew 11. Okay? Take my yoke my yoke upon you and learn of me. That's a spiritual yoke. It's not a physical yoke. It's a spiritual yoke. Right? And it's a, it's a, uh, a resting type of yoke. Learn of me, for I am meek and lowly of heart. Ye shall find rest for your souls. That's what we are seeking. We're not seeking to be lazy or just lay around and do nothing. Uh, you know, sleep is good, but sleep has its place. That's not what the Lord is talking about here. He is referring to spiritual rest. And for these children of the Old Testament, they were still waiting for that true rest which was to come in the person of Christ. He was their Redeemer. Okay, he is our Redeemer. We'll get to that. We're only in verse 6. <clears throat> and the Sabbath of the land shall be meat for you. For thee and for thy servant. And for thy maid and for thy hired servant. And for thy stranger that sojourneth with thee. The Sabbath of the land. 
It's good for you. That's what God is saying. It's meat for you. Meat, what does that mean? It's bread. It's something that you need. The land needs rest. You need rest. I need rest. We all need that rest. Okay? And though the land does not get a spiritual rest because it's just dirt, the land gets physical rest because of it, its being under the curse. If you till the land too much, year after year with no break, it'll never recover. You take all the minerals and nutrients out of it. Okay? God knows that. And that's one reason why he's saying you need to give the land rest so it can bring forth abundantly. You need that spiritual rest. I need it. All of God's children need that rest, the spiritual rest that comes through Christ. And for thy cattle, verse 7, and for the beast that are in the land, shall all the increase thereof be meat. Okay, so, he's saying,